of the most important parts of evaluating these types of patients is listen to them, talk to them for a minute, and a lot of times that'll unlock some of the information that you really need to make the right diagnosis. So it's an audio picture. Let's listen to some various things that we may, that may reveal something about our health. Hi, Mom, it's me. Give me a call when you get a chance. So if you're hearing a voicemail like that, you have to think about something else going on. Absolutely. I mean, when you think about that, obviously, the voice, differences in voice are, are subtle for sure. But, you know, what I would typically think of in a situation like that is some sort of a polypoid growth. The most common thing would be a vocal polyp, typically related to overuse. You see these a lot in people who use their voice for a living. Travis, you'd be a candidate possibly actually for somebody that in time could develop these types of problems. So we're looking here, this is a polyp surgery. Walk us through what we're seeing here. So this is a great example of somebody that has a lesion on the vocal cord here. This little whitish growth is a vocal polyp. And what's going on here is this is being removed via what we call micro laryngeal techniques, small instruments to take off small pieces of tissue. Most laryngeal and voice problems are treated with rest and conservative therapy. Um, and so this is after those measures have failed. And so we have a before and after here, which will sort of highlight, I think, what we were looking at before. And so this, you know, this is, this is after the operation. So you highlighted to me before, really what you were getting rid of over here is sort of this polyp area over here. Absolutely. Is this is a patient I treated a few years ago. I think the most important thing is this area that's highlighted in pink is really the most important part of the voice from a speaking standpoint. So when we remove a lesion like that, we create a smooth surface. We call this the phonatory or speaking part of the voice box. And you can see it's bumpy and lumpy there and it's nice and smooth and well So this person there. would go from maybe having that hoarse type voice to after the operation, a little rest, that would clear up. Much clearer. Sounds just like the voicemail before and much clearer afterward. Okay, let's move on because this is another voicemail you may hear. Hi, Mom. It's me. Give me a call when you get a chance. So you're talking about vocal cord paralysis here? You hit it on the head. I mean, the, the most common, other than hoarseness, which is common with all these conditions, inefficiency of the vocal cords is the issue. Vocal cords, as we, as we showed in the first image, come together and close off that air passage. And when one vocal cord isn't moving all the way over, the air passage never closed and the air gets wasted. So these people are constantly breathing to talk. So, the, so literally the breath is escaping while they're talking. Well, you know, this is, this is really enlightening. And we actually have Dr. Weeks patient, Ollie here, who has vocal cord paralysis. Ollie, why don't you come on up? So, Dr. Weeks, when you first, well, how long ago did you first see uh, Ali? I met Ali about 15 months ago. He came and, into my office. And what was going on with him? He had had a neck surgery done, and it, during that surgery, um, he sustained some sort of injury, trauma to one of the nerves to his voice box, and he subsequently became really hoarse, had some swallowing issues, and we diagnosed him with a vocal and, cord and, paralysis. And so typical injuries, to, uh, paralysis of the uh, vocal cords, either blunt trauma or iatrogenic, sur surgical injury. Most common causes uh, any type of surgery involving the neck structures. And then other things you don't want to worry about are could a tumor be present or something more, more kind of difficult to potentially diagnose. But in all these situations, he had had neck surgery and right after he finished his surgery, he was acutely hoarse. So we kind of knew what the cause was. And I hope you can show us how he's doing now. Absolutely. Oh, you know, I'm going to show your vocal cords to the world. Sure. Definitely. It's okay with you. I'm going to go ahead and uh, perform a laryngoscopy. This is a flexible skull. And Ollie, before we do this, can you yeah. just, uh, you know, how are you feeling today? I'm, I'm, I'm doing great today. I mean, over the last year, things have improved quite a bit. So. Okay. Okay, let's move along with the scope. And so what we're going to do here is on that screen, we're going to gently pass this image. And Ali has basically been through this before, so this is not difficult. What I'm doing now is passing through the nasal cavity. In just a minute here, we're going to be around the corner, and we're going to be visualizing his voice box. So the voice box is coming into view. You're doing great. Just breathe. Okay, now this is going to be switched image, so you're going to see movement on what looks like the right side, but it's actually on the le his right vocal cord. So Ali, give us a nice breath and say e e, e. and his right vocal cord is not moving you at all. See how that's not moving everyone? Okay. I'm going to come on out now. I think that nicely illustrates what a vocal cord paralysis looks like. Um, real quickly, Ali's compensated extremely well. His voice has gotten much better over the year. He chose not to be treated acutely. Most patients choose to have an injection procedure or a medialization procedure to move that vocal cord in a good position. But it's a classic case where if you pay attention to your voice, to your voicemails, you may learn something about your health that you need to get checked out. Ollie, we wish you the best of luck.